good afternoon. The Lord be with you. Pastor George Borkhart, Bible study time. We are in Genesis 21. I'll take a few minutes and let people get here. And while we do, we'll just simply plug higherthings.org, uh, the virtual conference. Oh, you want to register for this. You want to go to higherthings.org and you want to get this conference. Uh, 10 hours plus of amazing content. Access to six months of the MyHT social media, places a, a forum for questions to be asked and 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 youth ministry talk and a, a moderated place for youth and young adult staff. Hi, Linda. Hi, Terry Lynn. Hi, hi Colonel Davis. So you want to go, higherthings.org and check it out today. Be gifted. Great speakers. Fisk, um, Roseboro, uh, Pastor Drew, um, uh, Pastor Brad Drew, uh, Pastor Harrison Goodman, who we had earlier. Um, good stuff. And you get that content for six months. Oh, it's going to be amazing. Woo. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. Thor's in it. Uh, Thor and I did our uh, our uh, our plenary for that, and um, so you you want to um, you want to go today to higher things. Now, I made sure I got that that done. Uh, yesterday we went a little long. Um, sorry about that, and we will try to go a little shorter today. But um, we shall see what we get done. One more share. This is Genesis uh, 21, ah, starting with the 10th verse. Share. So, uh, remember, we um, began this section, but we did not get to finish it. Hi, Sue, the Lord be with you. No, HT's not going to only be up for six months, Felicity, but that content is, is available for the... Um, uh, the my HT subscribers, and um, and there and and six months is how much time you get with the with the virtual conference. You get six months of of the premium content from Higher Things. So you want to check that out. All right, and there we are. Good, good. Cindy did her job and sent me a text that said. Um, don't have anything other than logos behind. Um, so let's rock and roll our way through this. Hi, Brenda. The Lord be with you. All right. So let's rock and roll this. Um, so remember, it was Isaac's weaning day. And, and there was a party and the oldest of the, of the, of the children, the oldest is, uh, none other than, um, Ishmael, Ishmael from Hagar. So the oldest is there. He's about 13 or 14. Um, and he, and all the attention is on the air. Uh, Isaac in is born from Sarah um, and the attention is all on him as it should be. Uh, and so, um, and Sarah sees Ishmael mocking the air. All right. Um, and she and so she tells, she tells Abraham, cast out the slave woman and her son. For the slave woman should have, uh, should not be with the heir, Isaac. And, and as we saw yesterday, it, this upset Abraham because Ishmael is his son. He loves Ishmael. Um, I don't know about whether he, he is, um, uh, crazy for, um, um, uh, Hagar or not, but Ishmael, he definitely loves. Um, and so, and, and, and remember Ishmael was to be born 
of Hagar, but so it was supposed to be Sarah's. But that did not work out, despite the, the Saracens um, saying that they are, uh, that, that, that Ishmael is from um, Sarah. Uh, that, that, that even though Hagar, they're not Hagarins, they're, they're Saracens. And so, um, so we, 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 we've, we've got this, we've got this tension and mama had enough. Mama said, cast him out. And Abraham's not on board. Not really. And God comes to Abraham and he tells him to listen to his wife. Don't be, don't, don't, don't turn a, don't turn a grumpy eye to, um, don't be displeased because of the boy and the slave woman. Um, so what Sarah says you do for through Isaac, shall your seed be called, shall be your seed be named. And I will make a big nation out of, out of, out of Ishmael too. Um, and so the next morning, uh, Abraham wakes up, bread and a flask of water, gives it to Hagar, sends her on her way. And she wanders into the wilderness of Beersheba. And she's wandering. She's sort of out of sorts. She's, um, she's a hot mess because her husband, um, because her pride, because she's broken and, and she needs to be broken and Ishmael needs to be broken. And, and the problem that Abraham was running into was that his emotions and his love for Ishmael was causing him to keep God from properly distinguishing law and gospel on them which is just a great thing. Um, Ishmael puffed up thinking that he is the heir is contrary to faith, contrary to the word of God. And Ishmael must be broken. He must be crushed by God's law. It sort of reminds me of a story um, from seminary. Would you like to hear a college story from me? So I was a young sim student. I'd come from a secular school, LSU, Go Tigers. Um, that was backwards. How embarrassing in front of thousands of people. So I'm at LSU uh, and everything is secular. Papers are due on time. Um, uh, uh, you get what you deserve and all of this. And I go to seminary and my first year of seminary, I'm busting my tail. I'm literally busting my tail all the time. And, um, uh, and my, my classmates are all turning in papers late and I'm staying up all night to turn in my papers on time. Cause that's the way that I had always. Yeah. And so, um, uh, I get to Dr. Nagel's class, Dr. Norman Nagel. He's with the Lord now. And his whole class was a paper. And I just decided, you know, why are you doing this? Why are you busting your butt to get a paper in on time when all of your classmates, I mean, people were turning in their, their papers after the class was over. All right. Why are you doing this? Why? Least common denominator, just do it. So my paper was a week late to Dr. Nagel. So I go in and hand him my week late paper and he looked at me as is his way and he goes, well, of course there will be a deduction for this. And, um, and I look at him and I must've, you know, this face, you, you, we've gotten to know each other over the past. I think we're in the nineties. This is like episode 95 or 96. Next week we celebrate 100 and they will be a big bash, a big bash. To celebrate 100. But, um, uh, Sandra, what number are we on? And don't forget to count the one that it's still private. But, um, I must have looked at him like he was mental. And he had this great line. He's great, Jim. He goes, oh, of course you won't want to tempt me to not properly distinguish law and gospel, would you? And I'm just looking at him like, oh, no. And I mean to be in the class because my paper was was a week late and I had no, no answer for that. I guess I should have said, Oh, but Christ has taken on the law for us, Dr. Nagel. Uh, but here where the law is to be applied, the law is to be applied. 
And where the gospel is to be applied, the gospel is being, uh, to be applied. And to get in the way of that is to get in the way of the Lord doing his work. And that was what was going on with Abraham. Abraham wanted to apply mercy to a situation that required the law. Uh, Luther says there is no room for antinomianism with this. It, uh, Ishmael needed to be crushed. Ishmael thought himself to be the big guy, the number one son, and he wasn't. He wasn't. And so what happens now is happened, happens to save Ishmael. See, the Lord disciplines those he loves. When God does something to you, don't think that he doesn't love you. He does love you. He does love you. He loves you in the giving up of his son. And don't look at the external circumstances to try to figure out whether or not God loves you or not. You won't find it. All right? Uh, you look at you look at your life. You're like, well, um, uh, the, you know, this happens to me. This happens to me. This happens to me. The rain falls both on the just and the unjust. How do I know God loves me? Well, I know God loves me in the giving up of his son. I know God loves me in the gospel. Abraham knew God loved him because God had made promises to him. I'm going to be your God. And you're going to be my people. I'm going to make you a great nation. And I'm going to bless those who bless you. And I'm going to curse those who curse you. And I'm going to visit Sarah. And Sarah's going to have a kid. And you're going to name him Isaac. You're going to name him Isaac because this is the funniest thing. Because Isaac means he laughs. This is the funniest thing. Sarah's way past the time. Abraham is way past the time. And there ain't no pills to help. And, and all of this is, a, is funny. Because God's funny. But God's doing miracles. And so Abraham says, um, God says to him, No words are impossible with me. Which is the same thing he says to Mary. When another impossible, funny thing occurred, when the virgin conceived and gave birth to a son, you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. How often do we believe the promises when we are in dire straits? Maggie, you are completely right. And after we're done with this tale, this, this, this tale, this, this, um, it's a story. It's, 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 it's a, it's a history. After we're done with this history, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to have a little, 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 little moment with you. So, so she like departs and she's all like, like, um, kerflunked. Is it, what's the word? She's out of sorts. She's wandering around. And that's where we left her. We left her wandering around and we left her like she stops, she runs out of water and she puts her son underneath the 13, the 14 year old boy. She puts him underneath a bush and she just sits back uh, about a, about a bow's shot away. And she just sits back and she just weeps to the Lord. And that's where we stopped. And this is meant to be sad and this is meant to be hurtful and this is meant to be, um, yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, Pastor Lestico is correct. Um, and this is important too. Notice the difference in the way, well, that's a rabbit hole. Uh, God deals with, with people differently. To high priest Zechariah, he expects Zechariah to believe his words. When Zechariah doesn't believe that Elizabeth's going to have a kid, he strikes him mute to show his glory. Mary, on the other hand, can ask the angel a bunch of questions like, um, I don't know a man. How's it work? How's that going to happen? I don't know a man. Um, so like to whom much is given, much is expected, which is why I didn't want to be a pastor. Judged differently. So, so God comes to Abraham and says he's going to have a kid in his old age. God has a conversation with him. God comes to Mary and says she's going to have a, a baby and she's a virgin. And God has God has a conversation with her. God comes to Zechariah and says, you're, you're, uh, Elizabeth's going to have a kid. And it's, it's kind of like the Hannah story. 
Um, Hannah was sad that she was um, barren too. And so Elizabeth's going to have a kid. And Zechariah's like, how can that be? I'm old. And God's like, you don't get to talk. Nine months. No, no soup for you. Come back. Nine months. I've always found that great. Maybe that's so, Maggie. Mary asks, how will this be? And not how can this be? I won't have to check the Greek on that. All right. But anyway, um, God heard the voice of the boy. Who was talking? Let's go back again. About a bow shot away. Hagar says, let me not look on the death of my child, my son, my son. And as she sat opposite her, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy. Of the boy who isn't saying anything. Is he? Or if he's thirsty, if he's um, if he's hurting, if he's if he's dehydrated, is he saying, "Mom, mom, mom"? Is he saying, "God, God"? Um. The promise is connected to whom? This is important. Don't miss it. Who's the promise connected to? It, it ain't Ishmael. Who's the promise connected to? God made whom a promise? He made Abraham a promise. And he's going to bless Ishmael for Abraham's sake. Yes, earlier he said that um, that I have no idea what's bugging Felicity, but um, yeah, the uh, Maggie, the, the the promise is connected to Isaac because of Abraham, uh, because of Jesus coming from Abraham through your seed, all will be blessed. Ishmael. Ishmael's blessed because, because of his connection to Abraham. And so God hears the voice of the boy. Don't miss this. This is gospel to Abraham. This is good news to children of Abraham. This is God loves Abraham. He's made promises to Abraham. He keeps his promises to Abraham. He's told Abraham, don't fret about the boy being sent away. Don't fret about it. I got you. I got his back because I got your back. I want you to think about this the next time that we pray for your unbelieving children or grandchildren. Ask God to, to bless them with faith because he loves you. He loves them in the giving up of his son, but the same way that you blessed and looked after Ishmael for Abraham's sake, this would be really helpful if you would look out for them, for my sake. Their sake too, God, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah, Terry Lynn, it's exceptional for us too. Look at the mercy of God connected to the baby Jesus. <laughs> to the baby Isaac. To the promise made to Abraham. Because all of this is about saving you. It's all about saving you. I made the mistake of catching some Chinese food before and I am just dying of thirst. Um, and there, Maggie, you're, you're holding him to his promise. You've done this before, God. You did this for Ishmael. Do it for me. On, a, on, a, on behalf of Jesus, bless them. Not because they're good, not because they deserve it, but because of Christ. 
What troubles you, Hagar? Don't fear. God's heard the voice of the boy where he is. Don't miss that either. Where he is. Where he is. Don't miss it. God heard the voice. He did not go to God. God came to him. God came to him right there where he is. We don't go to God. We don't ascend to God. God comes to us. And God gives us mercy. And God gives us forgiveness. And God saves us. Felicity, I have no doubt that Isaac liked to laugh. None. I bet he was a very, very happy boy until chapter 22. And then he's a profoundly different boy after that. Um, so God heard the voice of the child. What troubles you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is under the tree in the wilderness. Thank you, Terry. Lynn gave us the... G so where you are, there he is. That was a, another, another Dr. Nagelism that I used to love. Um, where you are, there he is in his gifts, in his word, in his water, in his body and blood. You don't go to God. God comes to you where you are, in the lowliest of the low, <coughs> where you're suffering, where you're hurting, where you're alone, where you think God is, is least, um, uh, where you think God is least, God is most for you. God is more for Ishmael right now than when Ishmael was at the top of his game going, what a stupid kid that Isaac is. What a ridiculous kid that is. I'm the oldest. I'm the oldest. And where he thought he had it all together, God was against him. He's full of sin and he's full of death. And now he has nothing but the cries that he makes to mama and God Thor just made a sound. And God is most for him. There's going to be a day. I want you to know this. There's a day that we're all running from. And we can see it in the coronavirus. 0.4% mortality rate. And we are running like we are being chased by the bear. And we are throwing people behind us as we are chased by the bear. Because, see, I don't have to outrun um, the bear. I just have to outrun you running from the bear. And we are running from this bear, this monster, this death. And we run and we run and we run our whole lives. And when God rescues us from death, we thank him and act like he loves us. Oh, how he's blessed us. Oh, how good he is. And then when the doctor tells us that we have cancer, or worse, when someone we love has cancer, we look up to God and we're like, uh, where are you? Where are you? And that moment in which we are struggling for breath, in that moment, we got that, that awful rattle. You know what I'm saying? The rattle. You, you know what I mean by the rattle. That moment where where we hear the sounds coming out of our loved ones that we that that we've never heard before, but it is unmistakably death. You don't you don't have to have a doctor tell you what's going on to know what a death rattle sounds like. In that moment, where we feel like we are most on our own, where we are struggling for our last breath, God is most for us in Jesus. That moment where our loved one is fighting for breath, God is most for them in Jesus. Because they have nobody else to cling to other than him. Ishmael, I'm the chief. I'm the number one. I'm the oldest. No, 
No, no, you, you ain't all that. In fact, you're gone. And so's your mama. Both of you, gone. And God backed Sarah on that. Because Sarah is the one here in the word of God. The, the child, the seed is Isaac. Up, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand for I will make him into a great nation. You know, I'm not a real big fan of the Ishmaelites. Um, I'm not a big fan of the Ishmaelites. Um, they, they, they tussle with the children of Israel, but I'm a big fan of this moment and I'm a big fan of Ishmael. Um, Because this is a beautiful moment for Abraham, for Ishmael, for Hagar. This is a beautiful moment. It's a beautiful moment. A beautiful moment. Because um, listen to the mercy of God. Lift up the boy. Hold him fast in your hand. For I make him a great nation. Then God opened her eyes. And she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. Death has to take a day off today. Because God has rescued Ishmael from death. For the sake of Abraham. And God was with the boy. And he grew up. And he lived in the wilderness. And he became an expert with the... Remember, Mama sat at a bow's distance away from him. A bow shot's distance away. And he becomes an expert with a bow. And this does not mean that he's an archery gold medalist. This means that he is a good fighter. Um, Luther makes the comment that the... That... Uh, uh, the um, Arabs are not generally conquerable uh, for any extended period of time. And he lived in the wilderness of Paran. And his mother took a wife for him from the land of Egypt. You got it, Maggie. Bo. So I told you earlier, Bo's distance away, it was going to be important. Um, and uh, um, um, I want, uh, what a beautiful thing. And, and, and he, uh, he is, um, yeah, God's at work through them, Maggie, um, uh, God uses the Ishmaelites to purchase Joseph. But the, um, and God can do all sorts of things with evil people. Look at what he does with us today. Um, I just, I want you to look at the faithfulness of Ishmael, who doesn't pick out his own wife, but he, his mama picks a wife out for him. Um, it's, it's sort of beautiful. And this is a sort of a beautiful moment for someone not in the line. Um, um, for somebody not in the line. Look at the mercy that God shows to Ishmael. Don't get lost in the fact that what an awful person Abraham is. Let me tell you, this is important. How can Abraham send his, 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 um, one of his wives and his son away? How does he do that? Well, because God told him to. And God's the Trump. Uh, not the president. I meant like the Trump card. Um, 
Whoever's not ready to leave everything and follow him is not worthy of him. So God gives him a promise. I'm going to make you a big, I'm going to make you a big nation. I'm going, to, I'm going to be your God. Isaac, Isaac's through the line. Your seed, Isaac, savior of the world. And for that to go on, Hagar has to get sent away. I'm going to take you back one more time to Galatians. Tell me. You who desire to be under the law, and who doesn't? Who doesn't desire to be under the law? And according to our flesh, we do. We like that religion a lot better than we like the gospel. It appeals to us. You get what you deserve. Do you not hear the law? Let me tell you about the law, says Paul. This is Galatians 4.20. Abraham had two sons. I love Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. No, no, he, he did. He did have many. But two here. Um, one from the slave woman and one from a free woman. Okay? The son of the slave was born according to flesh. Their plan to fix the situation. The son of the free woman was born through the promise. Now, Paul's going to give us the allegorical interpretation of this. So anybody who tells you I don't like the allegorical interpretation of the Bible. I like to, I like to take it just the way it is, word for word, what it means. And I can make fun of a southern accent because I, I fight one. But if Paul's going to go allegorical, every now and again it's okay to go allegorical. Um, two women are two covenants. One, Mount Sinai. The law, the commandments, and that is one that produces children of slavery. The law and its commandments, uh, that's, okay, on the video it's reverse. Yeah, no, it's fine. The law and its commandments um, um, you know why it's a great hick voice, Maggie? Because I'm a hick. I'm a southerner. I'm a, I'm, um, it's more accurate than I'm probably Cajun, but um, uh, than Southern. But every now and again, I can, I can y'all like the best of them. The um, so uh, two different women, Ishmael, Hagar, law, slavery, leaving to death. Hagar, Isaac, freedom, leading to life. This leads to death. Slavery to sin, slavery to the law, slavery to condemnation, the anger and wrath of God. This produces more slavery, produces more law, produces more troubled consciences because the more you try to do, the less you actually do. The more you see you're failing. And this is death. Hagar is Sinai in Arabia. She corresponds to the present Jerusalem for she is in slavery with her children. Rejoice, O barren one who does not bear. Break forth and cry aloud, you who does not labor. For the children of the desolate one will be more than those the children of the, who, the one who has a husband. 28. But y'all, um, who may... That is uh, second per, uh, subversion plural, uh, properly translated by any good self-respecting Southerner as y'all. Y'all brothers, are you all brothers like Isaac, are children of the promise. Think about it. You're a child of promise. Not because of your birth. Not, um, yeah, I... Uh, Felicity, I work really hard not to have a Southern accent. Um, it's just the way I was raised. My, my parents didn't want me sounding. Uh, it's a family of lawyers, and I'm the black sheep of the family. 
Get it? Get it? Um, you're not a child of promise because you're such a good kid. Um, you're not a child of promise because you're such a good kid. You're not a child of promise because of um, a work that you've done. You're a child of promise because of the suffering and death of Jesus received by faith alone. But just as for a time, at the time that he was born according to the flesh, uh, the one born according to the flesh persecuted the one born according to the spirit, so it is now. And so what Paul is observing in the early church is that the Judaizers are rolling into the early church and, and telling Gentiles, you know, this, this salvation by grace alone, received by faith alone, is top shelf theology. It's spectacular. We love it. I love that top shelf theology. Grace alone, faith alone, good stuff. But if you really want to be a Christian, <laughs> uh, Maggie's made reference to um, the two Utes. That's my cousin Vitty. Um, the, that, that Christianity is great stuff, but to really be a Christian, what you need is circumcision. Then you'll be a real Christian. And they would even bring the apostles into it. Uh, you know, we talked to the, the 12, they're the real guys. Love that Paul guy. Love that Paul guy. But the real true blue 100%. They say get circumcised. So you really want to be a Christian, be circumcised. And so one persecutes the other. The one that's under the law persecutes the one who is free. And we have that today. Oh yeah, you believe in Jesus? That's outstanding. You believe in Jesus? That's outstanding. That's outstanding. Love it. That's outstanding. But have you made him the Lord of your life? Haven't you given him your heart? Did you make a decision for him? Have you spoken in tongues? Why do you still drink? All these laws and dance, all these laws that we put on, that, that those under the slavery to the law put on us and so persecute us. See, the little exchange that we learned about with all its drama, and it was good, with Ishmael, uh, happens for your sake so that you will know when somebody persecutes you for your freedom that you have in Christ Jesus. So you will know that God knows what's going on in it. That God knows. So you would find comfort in the forgiveness of sins. So that when the present Jerusalem, which is enslaved to the law and condemnation and works, persecutes you, the child of promise, set free from the law of works, and now living in the freedom of the gospel, loving and serving your neighbor without fear, of punishment. To cast off that slave woman and her child. Because Isaac's the child of promise. You're the child of promise. Don't let those under the law put you back under the law. No matter how well-intentioned they may be. Just as Abraham was well-intentioned. When he was like, I don't really like what you have to say about that. I don't, I'm not a big fan. Not a big fan. But what does the scripture say? Cast out the slave woman and her son. For the son of the slave woman shall not inherit the son of the free woman. 
So brothers, we are not children of the slave. We're children of the free. For it is by freedom. 5-1. If you could memorize something, it is for freedom that Christ has set you free. Stand firm and do not be subjected again to slavery. Don't let anybody rob you of freedom. Don't let anybody rob you of your freedom. Freedom is a terribly scary thing. Freedom is a terribly scary thing. We like the law. We like the religion of slavery. It's neat. It's clean. It's prison. It's Shawshank redemption. They know He knows how to be in prison. He only knows how to be in prison. He doesn't know how to be alive and free. Because all his life has been spent in slavery to sin. You've been set free. The most dangerous thing is a free, free person. The most they can do is kill you. You just raised from the dead. You've already died and you've already raised from the dead. Here it comes though. But if you tell people they're free... They'll just go and sin. No, they won't. No, they won't. Because if the sun sets you free, then you are free indeed. Free to live, free to move, free to love. Free to love others, free to care for others, free to lift them up. I wrote, uh, wrote an article one time, and if I've, I've told you this story before, and, and please forgive me. I wrote an article one time, and I wrote it on, um, it was one of the first articles I ever wrote for Higher Things. And I, I, I wrote that, um, other than the Ten Commandments, <laughs> other than the Ten Commandments, I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use our resident young person here. Other than the Ten Commandments, Felicity can do anything with her life. She can be a doctor, lawyer. She can be a garbage man. She can be a homemaker. She can do anything with her life. In the freedom of the gospel, she can do anything. And young people are really, really afraid about making sure that what they do with the rest of their life is, um, is in line with God's word. So in the freedom of the gospel, they can do anything. They can be anything. Because God doesn't love them by what they do or don't do. He loves them because of Christ. And again, I'm talking about occupations which do not break a commandment. And I, I got it kicked back. It, it failed doctrinal review. Because if you tell teenagers that they're free to do anything, they will just fornicate. And I responded, uh, no, they'll do good works. Um, they don't need the gospel to fornicate. No one ever needed the freedom of the gospel to fornicate. We're good at that on our own. Okay. Just like my children didn't need to learn to learn, uh, the freedom of the gospel to learn to steal. They did that on their own. They didn't need the freedom of the gospel to learn how to lie. They did that on their own because they're fallen. The only thing which is going to lift us out of that is the freedom of the gospel. But those who were enslaved to sin know only more slavery. So you tell them what to do and don't do. You tell them what to be. No. It is for freedom that Christ set you free. Don't let yourself be put back under the law. Don't use your freedom to sin. You're, why? Because you're baptized. You don't need to do that. You're not, that's, that's not who you are. You're a free freedom person. Born from above. Child of Abraham. Baptized. Child of God. Bought with a price. The very blood of the Son of God. 
And what Luther goes on to say is, in this section is a good, a good, cannot help but do good works. Everything the Christian does, even when he's wrong, works out for good. Think about that for a bit. Think about that for a bit. God makes even the wrong good in Christ. Makes even the wrong good in Christ. Because Felicity's so good? No. Because of Christ. And while we're on the subject of young people, eh, um, Lestigo. Lestigo sounds like Sulu in Wrath of Khan. So much for the little training crews. Um, Lestigo's like, so much for the short class. Um, while we're on the subject of it, we have, we're teaching our children not to fail, um, to, 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 to shelter them from failure. We're, we're teaching them, we're insulating them from uncomfort. We're, we're, um, we're, we're protecting them from, from, um, Right. We're protecting them from it. So they're, they, so they're not triggered. And there are events that are terrible that happen in our life. Um, uh, there are events that happen in our life which are not, um, that are trigger worthy. But simply a no answer isn't trigger worthy. Simply failing isn't bad. And so how will Felicity learn what she, what God wants her to do? She'll learn in the freedom of the gospel by trying and failing. And when she falls, she'll learn to get back up again. If she fails at chemistry, maybe she shouldn't be a chemist. And God is giving us a little bit of a guide there. Um... God's working through her parents to tell her, too, what she can do and not do. Because her parents know her better than she does. Maybe you shouldn't be a physicist. You're not that good at math. Or you, maybe you are good at math, Felicity. But the point here is that that our kids need to be, they need to, they need to try and they need to fail. Um, we don't need to insulate them so much that if they hear an alternate opinion, um, that they need to run for the hills. It's it's through failure, and what is what is what is um what does Saint Paul say? Um, suffering is good because suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope never disappoints. A callus is a good thing. I know it's, I'm in the middle of baseball season because the first time I uh, softball season, the first time I swing a bat. I end up with blisters uh, all over my hands. But by the end of the season, the calluses have arrived and I can go out and I can swing until the cows come home. Not that the cows ever come home for me, but you know what I mean. But the point of the matter here is God is working through all of the individual things um, to bring about good for you, but not just you, for others. And so he casts and humbles Ishmael in order to save Ishmael. And he casts and humbles Ishmael and Hagar in order that the good work of Christ coming from Isaac can save you and me. So this is a sad, sad account of an awful, awful thing in Genesis 21. But don't miss the gift of it. Don't miss the gift of it. God is working through to save. Tomorrow, we will finish up this chapter. We will go into the tempting of, of Isaac. If uh, we can't finish the tempting of Isaac, we will continue on to Saturday. Um, but... Uh, same bat chime, same bat channel 
for our Bible study. Uh, and just remember, you are free. And freedom in the Christian faith means not, I can do whatever I want. It's how do I look at and love my, my neighbor, knowing that God loves me. Knowing that God loves me. I'm Pastor Borkhart. Have a blessed day. I'll see you in a hop, skip, and a jump tomorrow.